Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Laborowit from the Baltimore area, and I want to share with you the novel technology of the RevH Ascend technology on the LensX laser, and how I leverage that in cataract surgery. This is the screen showing in the bottom the new horizontal cut that you can now turn on. The horizontal pattern can be between 50 and 80 percent of the treated lens as far as the depth in the lens where it makes that cut. And the horizontal cut overlap is in microns between 30 overlapping or underlapping. So you can see here the outer cylinder is in pink and so you can extend the horizontal cut beyond or under by 30 microns. And this is showing zoomed in. In this case I use 50% depth and minus 22 on the horizontal. So here's a case showing also on the lens X to coronal view in the top left, you see the horizontal cuts at 50%, and there's a teal line showing you where it's going to cut. So while it's doing the procedure, it's done during the cylinder creations, and it's the same energy as the cylinders, and this is the horizontal cut now seen on the lens X. Here's an additional case showing the horizontal cut with the RevH technology. Starting from the bottom, the lens is being broken into cylinders, and then at 50% depth, there's a horizontal cut, and then the rest of the cylinders are then created. The chop pattern is still placed within the cylinders. Here's a high mag version. You can see it starts from the periphery and moves central. Next I want to share with you how I leverage this technology in the operating room. So I routinely visco dissect to the equator knowing there's air bubbles pneumo dissecting the posterior aspect of the cataract off the capsular bag. Next I'm going in with a hydrodissection cannula to the horizontal cut and you can see how I'm able to hydrodilineate and the top 50% of the cylinders are able to easily lift off because of that horizontal cut. Notice when I'm using phaco emulsification, I'm able to leave the phaco tip parallel at the iris plane and not reaching beyond the capsulotomy. This keeps it in a safe position and allows it to function more like a trash can and a second instrument where the Rosen chopper in this case is used to bring the cut laser pieces up to the tip. The densest part of the cataract is therefore removed easily with less CDE in a safer manner. So the hydro dissection allowed the top half of the cylinder cuts above the horizontal cut to come up and you can see then I can use the chop to then crack the rest of the core area and cylinders. Because I have the horizontal cut at a specific percent of the lens, I now know where I am in the lens and then can more confidently then reach with my second instrument to lift up the other half, in this case, of the posterior lens material. Between the active fluidics and the depth gauge being used uh, with that horizontal cut, it gives me uh, more opportunities to remove the densest part of the cataract in a safer manner. Because the chop pattern extends beyond the cylinders, you can see you can then uh, use that to then create the four quadrants and pull in uh, the remaining quadrants, again, leaving your phaco tip central. The laser chop pattern does create these quadrants so they're a specific size that can easily fit into the bold out area as well. This is a 
coronal view of an actual lens that had the laser application, it shows without the horizontal cut that you'd have these long cylinders that would be more difficult to pull up and remove. But by bisecting these long cylinders into smaller pieces, it can more easily remove them with the FACO or second instrument. I like to say that it's more like a tater tot instead of trying to pull a french fry. You can see here that the horizontal cut was placed at 70% depth, but keep in mind you still have a 500 micron cushion of the posterior capsule. Here's a case where I'm hydrodilineating along the horizontal cut and then I can easily lift up the laser cut cylinders because they're not long pieces. They were bisected in half with the horizontal cut. The last case was showing a softer nucleus. However, this is showing a very dense core nucleus and how you can leverage the femtosecond technology to remove the central plug for ease of removal and keeping your phaco tip within the capsular rexus area. With the second instrument, I'm able to crack the core plug off from the more peripheral dense area and then lift the plug up. Having the horizontal cut extend beyond the outer cylinder will allow for some gas to accumulate and some potential space for a second instrument. So here the central plug is uh, removed because the density of this cataract lined up with the cylinders. So I'm not reaching down trying to sculpt deep into this lens. I'm able to lift it up to the phaco tip to control my FACO energy, do some manual breakdown of the density for ease of removal and lower CDE. You can see as I'm removing this, it serves as a nice graphic for how the laser breaks up the cataract into tater tots versus french fries, or bisecting these long nuclear vertical cuts with a horizontal cut. So it takes me from 24 pieces up to 44 pieces now. And sometimes this will help with removal of the cataract by removing the plug or lifting the anterior half laser cut cylinders, but other times it just serves as another breakdown in the material so once you start phaco emulsification, it eases the breakdown of that nuclear material for removal. Imagine if you did not have this horizontal cut, how the laser application would have these longer pieces that have more surface area adhering to each other. And so it literally breaks it up in half. You can get a better sense of the density of this lens as I try to remove it. However, the CDE is still under 5 with the density uh, of this magnitude. Also, the phagomulsification is deeper in the eye of the iris plane, not near the, iris, not near the cornea. This is another case showing the viscodissection. And in this case, you can see how pieces of the nuclear core area easily come up because of the horizontal cut. So I'm using the FACO tip more to just manually 
push these pieces to collapse them and then remove them. I can tell when I'm at the horizontal cut because of the bubbles on the surface, but I also know that if I'm at the 50% mark that I could place my second instrument like I just did to remove the bottom half. This is a denser lens and I'm able to again uh, crack the central plug and remove it by uh, manually having the second instrument uh, flick pieces up to the phaco tip. Notice during this case again that the phaco tip stays central and not extending beyond the capsulotomy and is at the iris plane serving more as a trash can again. Once you get a few initial pieces it starts to collapse on itself as you remove the other pieces within the core area. And the chop pattern will allow you to further crack the lens and get more of the pieces as well. I'm confident placing my second instrument deeper because I have the horizontal plane telling me how deep I am inside the lens and also the active fluidics keeps the chamber solid uh, for ease of removal. Once I remove the dense core area, again this was a very dense lens, the CD is about 1.3 but then I can use the chop pattern to create my four quadrants and these quadrants are now a known size so I'm also uh, confident as I place my second instrument in the chop pattern cracked area to just pull these quadrants into the central bold out area so I created a potential workspace for removal Notice I didn't rotate the entire lens in the bag, which is more gentle in the zonules if there's any potential concerns. So again, you can see using this strategy of leveraging the RevH technology for strategic nuclear removal has an impact on the positioning of your FACO tip during the case and keeps the CDE significantly lower compared to my manual cases. Here's another case and you'll see uh, as I uh, start to FACO some of the core area I can really concentrate on one quadrant where I'm staying, where I have good visualization to remove uh, pieces that are giving me the opportunity. Because once you remove even just a quadrant of some of the pieces, the rest of them will come up. Uh, it's almost like taking a bridge where you take the keystone out of an archway and the rest crumbles around it. I find that to be the case that even when I remove a little bit, you can see now I'm using my second instrument uh, because I created space for other pieces to easily kind of fall fall off and then into the tip. Sometimes using the chop pattern allows for uh, more pieces to loosen up to come in as well. Once again, I have a known quadrant size that I can stick my second instrument in and pull it into the bolt out area. So again, my phaco tip acts more like a second instrument, and then I rotate each piece into my phaco tip from there.
If you rewatch all this surgical video, you'll see the phaco tip stays mostly at the iris plane and doesn't extend beyond. So here I've actually over time evolved to have the horizontal cut at 70% depth and you can see the teal line is even deeper into the yellow area. And I've created strategy around this to lift up more of the anterior pieces and ease with removal of the bottom part. So once again you can see creating the cylinders at 4.7, the horizontal cut at 70% depth, So the FACO tip here becomes a second instrument. So I'm using the FEMTO technology because there's now a known size of lens with the cut pieces and I have a depth gauge while I'm doing surgery with that horizontal cut. The FACO tip's in a safe position because it's flat at the iris plane so it's not angled down and it's not reaching beyond the capsulotomy. So I would say traditional FACO is kind of like a dog eating uh, food out of a bowl. They can only use their mouth. Well, uh, and some people are uh, a little sloppier than others at times. Uh, but uh, when you're using a FACO tip to sculpt uh, and not active with your second instrument, the Ascend Rev H technology, it's like eating with a spoon. So you're using that second instrument to pull the pieces up so your FACO tip stays very neutral. I wanted to show you a very dense lens uh, where the laser uh, initially wasn't able to. Uh, break a lot of pieces off like shown in earlier videos and so here I was able to sculpt just one quadrant open so not even central and then I cracked the area but then once I made the crack I could then get my second instrument into the horizontal plane so I wasn't hydro delineating pieces up but I could use my second instrument to then get in and lift pieces up and once I create that crack the horizontal cut served as a, a depth gauge so I know how deep I can send that, put that instrument and lift pieces up. So I always find it's easier and safer for me to lift pieces from below when I'm given the opportunity and that's how I'm leveraging the, uh, the flax technology to allow for that. And that's what this case is demonstrating, how the second instrument uh, is able to crack and lift pieces up and the FACO can then remove it safely central and flat at the iris plane. Rather than reaching down and trying to sculpt deeper and questioning how deep you are in the lens and wondering if the lens will crack. That also puts a lot of tension on the zonules as well. This case also shows how the laser creates these geometric shapes while you're trying to remove quadrants or core areas. You end up with lens material that's a very specific size so even though this is a dense lens you could see earlier how I cracked it and as I'm removing quadrants they just fit into certain spaces because they're exact sizes where in traditional FACO the sizes are very unpredictable. Well, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video and I hope you enjoy the new Rev H technology. Thank you.